WHPR, Legal Issues and Health. I'm your host, Carl Williams, and my co-host, Gloria Ann Searles. Hello, everyone. The Lord be with you. And we are here to bring you all the current issues that affect the community uh, regarding the charter and, and water issues and any other issue and your health. And the information that we are bringing to you, this is information that you can use right now. And this is the information you can use, especially for your health. You're going to be very surprised about some of the things that you may hear on this program that can cut your costs and cut a lot of the so-called diseases that they claim that you have. So we're going to just get right into it because we got so much to cover. And like I used to do, I got to continue to doing that. I hope that everyone got their reference tools. And what I mean by your reference tools, I mean your federal constitution. And I, I'm going to hold this up. I'm going to show you how small it is. I just got one of these at the bookstore. And we were running around all weekend. And I got to remember, I think it's, it's on uh, Cass, but I'm going to get the address to it. It's a nice bookstore. It has a lot of uh, books you need to go buy there. You'd be surprised what you could, might find in there. Also, you got the state constitution, and you got your basic human right pamphlet. You need those. These are your reference tools because... More and more as time go on, you're going to be talking, you're going to hear about your basic human rights, which is, is uh, this little pamphlet called What a Human Rights Is, and you got your Michigan State Constitution. It's a little bigger, but, the, and see, the, the killing part about this here, all this material is free. All this material is free. Don't cost you nothing. You can get some of them. Well, matter of fact, you can go online. I know you can get the Michigan State and Federal Constitution. And you can get your basic human rights. I don't know how much uh, until the human rights will, but they will give you the main ones, if not all of them. Because it's been a while since I've been on there uh, to research about the human rights because I already have a pamphlet. Matter of fact, I made some small booklets and was giving them out myself. So these are your, what I call reference tools that you need, and you need to have them so you can always go reference. Oh, yeah, one more thing. I'd I, I be remiss if I don't mention that. Your Detroit City Charter. That's the other one. Especially now. Most certainly need that one since you are, uh, you know, they're doing the revision of the charter now. Because we got a lot, a lot of things going on now. You got this uh, water affordability issue that's going on. I'm going to touch on that a little bit because. Uh, one thing me and Gloria was talking about as we were coming over here, we got to start calling things by their proper name. You know, we got to call them for what they are. I keep hearing people keep talking about the water for affordability. Water is too high. Water is too this. Water is too that. If you go to court, if you go to any hearing and you say that, with the way that they have been doing it, you will lose. And I'm going to tell you why. Your water is affordable. Your water is the cheapest thing on your water bill. It's not your water. It's your sewage and your drainage. And if you don't say sewage and drainage and keep talking about your water... See, that's how they fool us all the time. 
We ain't, we don't think. Just because it says the water bill, we just go right along with it. Yeah, well, our water bill too. No, your water bill is not too high. The water portion of your water portion of your bill is reasonable. It's the sewage and the drainage system is ridiculous. So you got to call it what it is. We were having a meeting last, uh, well, I think it was Saturday. And, uh, you know, I brought that out. And I'm going to continue to bring it out because if we expect for them to address the problem, we got to, we got to address the problem the way it really is. Without the sewage, without the drainage, ah, shoot, we'll be back like we used to be, paying our water every three months. Because it's, you know, the cost to uh, put it on paper and disseminate it to the customer will be more than what it's worth. This is why they add the sewage and drainage on there in the mm -hmm. first place. Because the water was so low, and that's why we, they did it every three months. Because why? Well, well, it don't make no sense to send you a bill and to send it to you cost $15 and your bill is <laughs> less than that. That's, that's ridiculous. So you, you, you wouldn't make no profit because it costs you more to send it out and the, than what you were charging. So, we, you know, we got to understand that. We got to understand that, and we got to call it what it is. Mm -hmm. We can't say water. Well, if you're going to say the cost of water, you got to say why mm -hmm. it costing you or why the cost of water is so un un unaffordable. It's unaffordable because they had the sewage and the drainage on there. And that's why you are unable to, mm -hmm. to pay it. But just say water is unaffordable and, and go along with that and people start, you know, saying the same thing. Did you say the water is unaffordable without explaining it? You give the people the wrong impression. Mm -hmm. So you got to be in detail on what you're saying. So when you do say water affordability, the people understand what you're talking about. The water affordability is too high and out of right because they didn't add the sewage mm -hmm. and the drainage on there. But the water by itself is, is all right. But if you take that sewage and drainage off of there, you, 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 won't, you won't have a problem. So we got to address the problem like it is and like always. Uh, we have made forms to object and protest against the water, the drainage, and the uh, stormwater drainage fees. Mm -hmm. We have been doing that, have been done that, and we usually have the forms over there after the show where you can come and pick it up over there at uh, Wendy's, right up there, Davidson and Woodward. We haven't stayed. We'll be there every, just about every, every Wednesday, Wednesday or Tuesday, or I Tuesday. Mean, yeah. after, the, after the show. Yeah. <clears throat> so that's one thing that I, I wanted to touch on so everybody know, hasn't nothing changed. We're still addressing the water issue. We just got so many issues we don't, you know, we can't talk about it all, all the time, but let you know that we haven't stopped. We still furnish you the, the forms to, uh, to protest and objection forms where you can send them in to Gary Brown, the, the Mayor Duggan, and uh, um, Susan McCormick of the Great Lake Water Authority. And once you send it to them certified mail, so you have your green card to prove that they received it, then that's all you have to do is continue just to pay your regular water bill. And the amount that they raised it, you just deduct that from your water bill and just keep on paying it. What are you going to do? A lot of people say, well, they come on, I ain't going to cut nothing off. First of all, you didn't vote on it. 
You was entitled to vote on this increase. And you never did. So that's a constitutional violation of Article 4, Section 29. Any local special act, the people that it affected has the right <laughs> to vote on it. So stop being so squeamish and so scary. The thing is illegal. You don't have to pay it. Stop thinking that they just can come arbitrarily and cut your water off and it's, not, it's nothing you can do if you don't know. But I'm telling you, it's illegal, and if they cut your water off, they can be sued. They know that. You just don't know it. That's why they ain't going to cut it off. They'll threaten you because most of the time they work. Most of the time they say, well, you got so many days to pay this bill, or we're going to shut your water off. They know that's all they got to say, and you run, you run down there scraping up penny bar taking money from Peter to pay Paul and calling your neighbors and your friends and everything, running down and breaking your neck trying to pay for that water. Stop doing that. You don't have to do it because it's illegal. I don't know how many times I got to tell you that. You ain't never heard nobody call up on this program and tell me I was wrong, to have you? As long as we've been saying that that was, it was illegal, you haven't heard not one time nobody call up and say, well, Carl, you wrong on that. They have the right to do that. They got the authority to do that. Well, tell me what authority is that. Mm -hmm. Well, he's the mayor. He's the mayor. Don't give him no authority. You don't even know what your branches of government is. The mayor don't have no authority even to make no, no legislation. The only thing he can do is implement it. Now, y'all do know the difference between implementing and making the law, don't you? Your legislature makes the law. That will be the city council. So, you know, let's, let's not get things. Let's understand how the process works and follow it and make them follow it. That's all you're doing. You just want them to follow the process the way it's supposed to be followed. Instead of trying to rig the system and charge you all these extravagant fees which you don't have to pay. So I just wanted to get that out because I've been uh, over the weekend and I had several people come up to me and ask me about the water and ask me but will we still uh, have the forms and why we don't talk about it anymore. So I just wanted to address it. So that uh, everybody know has nothing changed. You still can get the forms. You know, you still can come over there and get the forms. And you know, you can call me at three one three five two one five zero one two. I almost mm -hmm. forgot my phone number. <laughs> or you can call me on my cell phone at nine six nine six nine nine five. So again, my phone number is five two one. Five zero one two. That's my. That's a landline now. So mm -hmm. don't going to be trying to text me, telling me nothing on that line. It's a landline. I don't do that much texting anyway. No. My cell phone is nine six nine six nine nine five. So if you got any questions or anything, uh, you want to talk about, not just water anything. Those are the two numbers that you can uh, contact me on. Mm -hmm. And um, next I want to talk about is uh, Child Commission. They're still having meetings. It's still continuing. And they do have a website now. Uh, I think it's 2018 Detroit City Charter. If that's not it, that's pretty close. And if you put that in, it'll come up. Mm -hmm. It'll come up. They have a website now, but the thing about their website is if you want to know about a subject on the front page, they got pictures and they got uh, different little subjects. That they, and you have to click on the subject, and that'll tell you when they're having uh, the meeting of that particular 
uh, issue. Other than that, you know, they they trying. It's a little bit better. They still not, as far as I'm concerned, is notifying the public like they should. But matter of fact, now uh, this seems to be a trend. All these the the, the 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 commissioners and everybody else who is required to notify the public are doing a poor piss job and not notifying the public. They just going through the motion so they can say, well, we notify. No, they're not. Anytime you notify the public, what a public notification is, something in the newspaper, something on TV, which is free, public sta stations, they got about three or four of them on TV. Nobody never uses them. But they say they're trying to notify the public. Bull. And I told them that. Now, they didn't put something on, on their website, but that's not sufficient. Just to put it on your website and say that you're having a meeting and so on, so on, so on, so on, play. Everybody don't even know you even got a website. Mm -hmm. And also you required, but you do do that, I think you still do it. It's the city clerk office. Well, how many people go down to the city clerk office? But how many people could you reach if you put it on television on a public service announcement? If people know that you were going to announce it on TV, they turn it on. I mean, they don't, you know, you got some people now that look at the uh, public service station if they got certain programs on there. But other than that, they don't have no reason to look at it. But if they know that there's going to be announcements about the city charter and about all these other meetings that they have around in the community, they would turn it on and they would look at it to be notified. Or be aware of when you're having mm -hmm. them. So, you know, when they keep talking, telling you that crap about they notified and they really are eager to get the people to know, don't believe it. <laughs> don't believe it. Because they're not. You're not a robot. You don't need nobody. Well, it, 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 wasn't in the, it wasn't in the rules, so we ain't going to use that. What you mean? So, yeah, do saying the rule and robber rules or order. It don't say that you have to use it. But it common sense tell you if you sincere and really mean that you want uh, the public to be aware, that that's just common sense. You will use all those avenues to contact the public to make sure they be there. That's why mm -hmm. when you go there, it might be 50 people there, maybe. It ain't going to never be no big crowd because you, 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 the way you are uh, notifying the public, you're limiting mm -hmm. the amount of people to find out. Most of the time, it's the same people that's been coming. And, you know, they might tell some other people, and they, they come, maybe two or three. Mm. And that's because the people don't know how important this charter is. This charter is your local constitution, but it only can be a constitution if they put the charter back in your oath of office. I've said this I don't know how many times, and I'm going to keep saying it so you'll understand the importance of this charter. It is your constitution once you put it back in the oath of office. Now, they keep trying to act like they don't hear me saying that, and I say it every time I go to a meeting. But they never, you never hear it come back up later on as an issue. So I want all the people out there to know how important this is. This is one of the most important issues that you got because you can do that whole charter. But if you do not put the charter back in your oath of office, it is meaningless. Mm -hmm. Don't mean anything. That's because that's what it means that, that your public official take an oath to the federal constitution, the state constitution, don't have no allegiance to the charter. So that's why it's important to put the child mm -hmm. 
back under your oath of office so when all your public officials get sworn in, they just don't get sworn in to uphold the federal constitution, the state constitution, but also the charter. Now, I don't say human rights because that should be automatic. I mean, you're a human being. Why wouldn't you want to talk about human rights? You're a fool if you think you, you shouldn't talk about human rights <laughs> and you want to talk about everything else. And although what you might not know, your civil rights, constitution, all that come from the human rights. You was a human being before any of this existed. Hmm. Now, what makes you think that your civil rights and your constitution was here before you were? See how, see how crazy they got us thinking? We, I mean, they got us so mixed up, it's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. They got us thinking just backwards. Mm -hmm. All this state constitution, federal constitution, arrive from your basic human rights. But they don't talk about your basic human rights because really, when you really know it, they don't really have a whole lot of mm -hmm. jurisdiction. And they don't have no, um, well, I won't say jurisdiction because you could give them jurisdiction. But it's, they don't have a lot of, uh, I could say, authority over your human rights. The only thing they can do is agree with them. Mm -hmm. mm, where did you get your human rights from? You got that from the creator. Yeah. So how are they going to tell you? They can't say anything. Either they submit or they just don't. So they, that's why they don't talk about human rights. But you never heard nobody tell you that. You didn't have sense enough to sit down and think. Just sit mm -hmm. down and just think about it. Mm -hmm. These are my human rights. And this was given to me by the creator. Mm -hmm. What can a judge tell me about my human rights? Nothing. The only thing he can tell you, well, I agree. Oh, I disagree. Okay, you disagree. Well, then who you agree with since the Creator gave me these rights and you disagree with it, well, who are you agreeing with? It look like Satan to me. <laughs> look like the devil to me. I mean, I'm just mm -hmm. telling you. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't see... No now, if you see something that I don't see, please call me and tell me and let me know. Let me know that I'm mistaken and that... Uh, it's something else out there that I don't see. Because I'm, I'm always willing to listen. I, I, I'm, you know, I, ain't, I don't know everything. And if I'm wrong, I want you to tell me. Mm -hmm. Oh, it looks like somebody's trying to tell me something now. <laughs> Carl, are you on the air? Hey, good morning, Carl, and to your co-host. Good morning. Good morning, Ames. Yes, Deputy Chief. Hey, look, Carl, um, we need everyone to... Look at the article in Bridge Magazine. The article is, Detroit is booming. Too bad residents aren't getting the job. Could you talk up a little louder? Because I don't think they can hear you. I barely can hear you. Go ahead. Can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah. that's a little better. Mm -hmm. yes. Okay. We need everyone to pull up Bridge Magazine. The article is, Detroit is booming. Too bad residents aren't getting the job. The main focus of this article is showing from a uh, professor at Wayne State, his uh, area of study is urban planning. And he's showing where we got this white carpet bag mayor and these dumb, ignorant Negroes sitting on council given the developers our tax dollars in the form of subsidies and blacks in Detroit are not getting the job. The jobs are going to white suburbanites. And he's got it broken down where third, there was an increase of 31,000 jobs uh, from 2011 to 2016. 18,000 of them was in the downtown, midtown core. That was an increase of 19% in five years. But then in the neighborhood, there was a decrease of 2%. That was 4,800 
uh, job, there was the decline, okay? Now, again, this shows that Tyrone was right, okay? It shows, again, that our tax dollars, this white carpet bag there is using our tax dollars creating jobs for white suburb suburbanites when he should be creating jobs for Detroit residents, and he's not doing it. Well, you know what? I'm glad you called in to say that because I mentioned mm -hmm. that. I talked about that myself okay. uh, because I've noticed that you got all this booming, all these cranes, all the, air, the expressways, sidewalks, streets, everything, everything, all this building, constant building. And that's the same thing that I was saying, that where is the mayor program for the citizens in the community in the city of Detroit? He don't have none. No, he don't have a program, and this article proves it. And then, too, you can go to... Deadline Detroit, and it shows that uh, Detroit development decisions are based on desperation. And it shows how Duggan uh, is entering these deals with these developers behind closed doors, and he ain't telling the council a damn thing. Well, see, okay. that's, that's the. Well, see, Duggan always have been, uh, you know. Uh, shady, yeah, and he always have broken the law, and he gave had been getting away with it because his father was a federal judge, yeah. and he continued to get away with it. Now I don't know if his father retired or not, but it, uh, you know, people see these things and they need to start sending complaints in to the city about this thing. It don't make no sense uh, for all this building that's going on, and. Black folks are sitting around here just, you know, not saying anything. You need to be raising all kind of help because you, your kids, everybody should have a job. Matter That's of right. fact, you should have two jobs with all these buildings and stuff going on, and y'all just sitting around here, all this money, and all this building is going, mm -hmm. and when it get through, no. there ain't going to be no jobs. Then you're going to want to complain, and it ain't going to be nothing to complain about because there ain't going to be no jobs. Mm -hmm. So you need to get off your butt. And you need to start complaining now. He don't have no plan for the for the community. Duggan was put there to do exactly what he's doing. Right. To, to destroy right. The, the neighborhoods and the city of Detroit. He, you'll never hear him say anything about the community. Mm. Everything that he does be, benefits the suburbs. So, I right. mean, what's, now, I mean, what's wrong thing, with you? Kyle. Here's the other thing. Uh, everybody need to pull up the Detroit News article about the audit with the uh, city airport. They lose they they're losing five hundred million five hundred thousand dollars a year. Okay, now you talk about charter. Well, airport falls under the Detroit city charter. Now, how in the hell is the the, the mayor? And and council approving or the council approving uh, four million dollars for the airport, and they don't even know the condition of the airport. You got like they say, four families of coyotes living in the hangars. Okay, they say that concept, the leases, some of the leases haven't been renewed in thirty years. Mm. Okay, so how is it? that Roy McAllister, Scott Benson, Brenda Jones, and Janae Ayers sitting there approving money with the rest of the council members because they're on that committee. How are they approving $4 million for the airport and don't know what the hell is going on over at the airport? That's a good question. See, this is why I say coming out of City Hall, Mm -hmm. We have a ship of fools, the mayor, eight other council members are a ship of fools, and we have to take care of that and get them out of office because if we don't, we're through. Not only that, just get them out of office, some of these 
things that you are bringing up, which are significant, yeah. you need to put some of that stuff down on paper, and we need to file a complaint. Well, we're working on it. We're, we're, we're working on it, Carl. Uh, give me a call. I'll fill you in on it. And I, I, we don't have a problem sharing the information with you. Yeah, because it's good, you know, uh, information that you bring is good, but just bringing the information ain't enough. We got yep. to follow through on this information because that's that's something that needs to be done. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're absolutely right. No. You're absolutely right. And again, hey, we're working on it. We don't have a problem sharing the information with you. <coughs> Let's move it move it forward. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we appreciate that. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. Thank Thanks you. for taking my call. Thanks Thank for you. doing it here. Yep. Well, you know, see, see, that's why you have to tune in on this this station because we never know what what a caller gonna bring, uh, like like the information that he brought. I wouldn't wear that because I'm doing too many other things. You mm -hmm. can't be ev everywhere. everywhere. Mm -mm. It's just hard to do. Yeah. You know. So you know, we appreciate anybody that's out there that got information. And wonder why we're not talking about it. We're not talking about it because we don't know about it. Mm -hmm. So call in. You know, we don't we we, we welcome uh any information, anything dealing with the community, we welcome. Mm -hmm. You know, because these are the things that we we need to be aware of. Mm -hmm. You know, that's how you make, like the old say, informed decisions, right. you know, by knowing. Mm -hmm. But we can't make the decision on something if we don't know. And to be a, and become a part of, uh, you had um, Keith and I can't remember the other lady's name from the oh, airport. Oh, oh. Um, I can't remember, but they have meetings. Oh, know you know, they have meetings over there periodically uh, to let you know what's going on at the airport. I can't think of her name. She was here. Kendall. Oh no. But I you know who I'm say, talking about. I know who you're talking about. I just um, So a lot of the information you can talk. get when they meet to, to be a part of it, to hear what's being said and the funding. I know some of those, quite a few of those dollars are federal. Uh, yeah. Federal. So, um, but they, they are more in tune on what it's allocated for and how it's to be spent and that. And that still would take in involvement with some of the re residents that might want to have some employment or something like that uh, in making that happen, bringing that airport back up. Because yeah. it's a, it's a yeah. vital airport. It's know? vital, and, and it's something that we need. And, and uh, you know, it's one of the only – see, see we, we, we're missing – this is the only place where you can have – uh, your sons and daughters go there, and at 16, 16, yes. making $60,000, you got grown folks right now that don't make that much. Oh, yeah. And this yeah. is the, I'm, nobody wants to talk about it. We didn't talk about it on this mm -hmm. show a couple of times. We didn't add Keith and, uh, uh, oh, I Keith Hines, and I can't Keith remember Hines the name and, and, and uh, oh, gosh, I can't think of our name. Mm -hmm. But we didn't have them all on here on the show, and they have explained and told you about the jobs and everything. Yeah. And I don't see nobody moving to go over there. What, you scared of making money? I mean, not that you ain't just got to fly the airplane. They got mechanics. That's on the ground. That's right. More, more information. Uh, Keith had mentioned that more is being done on the ground to see that plane up in the air. That's where the work is done on the ground to make sure they're up in the air and things are proper and in order. But those air traffic controllers and all that's related to that, um, that's important. Those are important positions to have now because they are going to bring the airport back. Oh, yeah. And, I, and if we want to be seen or be part of it, we need to follow through and be at some of those meetings. The meetings that they don't attend, there are some others over at the airport in that vicinity that people can go when they meet. They meet regularly. You know, we, we, we have to, we're going to have to get more involved. You know, we're to be watchful. You know, the warnings are out, but we still, oh, we won't be a part of things. It'll go on and the people have the jobs for years to come. And we're sitting on the sides again, wondering what happened. 
You know, it's happening because you didn't take part of it. Or just, you know, go. I would go. I would hear meetings. I'd go. I'd be the only one sitting there look like me. I'd go and sit right up in the front. I could see heads turning, and I'd sit right there, you know. It's just a shock. And I showed up, but I would hear about meetings, especially when I was in first start my business in construction. I would show up here, you know, Ohio, wherever they had a conference that was going to benefit uh, what I was doing. I would show up, be a part of it, so I would know. And I could inform other people. We've got to do that. You know, we want other people to do a lot of things for us, but there's a lot of things we could do ourselves that's important to us, that'll benefit us, you know. Yeah, you're absolutely right. You are absolutely right. Oh, we got a call here. I'm going to take another call. Caller, you on the air? Yeah, you got a nice show. I watch you all the time. You know, Chief Ramos was right, and Tyrone, too. Just like that building, Dan Gilbert building over there where Hutchins used to be at. You watch and see the white folks in the suburbs, same thing in 1976 when they built the Renaissance Center. The white folks going to get the gravy job. And you can't tell me that black young people are not going to college, getting educated, and, and, and have the skills to get them jobs. But yet they still, they still uh, give it to their people. Tell me. You know, I, my thing is, if you're going to do all this construction going on in the city, and then you're going to hire foreigners and everything except black, you ain't, it ain't doing us no good. No, it wasn't, he wasn't put that to do us any good. That's what we failed to realize. And we got, we're got we going to have to do it to ourselves. We know he ain't going to do it, so we had to put pressure on council. We have to put Same pressure on council like to speak Roy up McCallister. for us. He come on P.O. show when he was running for city council. My, I'm not voting for none of those uh, councilmen, people that we got on there. Because, see, once they get in office, they forget about the grassroots people. When is elected next year or two more years? But, see, here's the thing. You failed to, we failed to do our job, which is once you put them in there, you got to put pressure on them. Mm-hmm. Nobody says anything. Nobody send no complaints in to the city council. Mm -hmm. In writing. But they'll go around and they talk about it outside. You, we need to start writing complaints, mm -hmm. going down there, making our complaints heard. And let them know, put pressure on them. When you put pressure on them, then they'll do something. They ain't got no reason to do nothing now because ain't nobody. We complain and on then the TV. Like this. But we don't go to them and complain. I want to hear this stuff about we don't vote. But what are they doing? I, they, they know we're going to vote. But what they doing? Are they selecting the people? They must be selecting the people because, like you're saying, people complaining and stuff. But with this city clerk we got in there, it's like he putting who she wants in office. Why that don't mean you stop voting. Oh, that bad. They paying to that kind of money. Well, you know, you just have to. There's, there's some, uh, some movement working to. Get up out of that, but that don't mean you stop voting that's because right. of that. That's you just right. actually, that's more. That's more reason for more of you to come out. Mm -hmm. Cause the more come out, the harder it is for her to manipulate stuff. Mm -hmm. But when you get the less people, you got the easier it is. Yeah. Well, I'm gonna say this and get off the line. You got other callers. I say white supremacists is behind this city clerk. Yeah, them Nick Rose gonna vote and mm -hmm. paying her to put who who they want in office, and, 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 and it, 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 it's a big problem, man. And, uh, she worked for what, and then when the ones get in office, they act, I have never seen so many educated Negroes scared of the white man. Thank you. Well, it ain't so well. You know, being educated don't mean you got sense. No. <laughs> you could be an educated fool, and we got a lot of them. You know, I got a degree, and I went to school for the years. See, now, this is a question I always used to ask. With all these degrees and stuff we got, they can't, why don't they, what have they ever did? I got five degrees. Okay, you got five degrees. Now, what have you did with them five degrees? Well, I got a job. I'm working over here for so and so and so. Well, why, why can't you create your own job? You got five degrees and you can't create your own job? 
Well, that, them degrees not doing you very much good, is it? Anytime you got a degree or got any kind of certificate or anything, and you can't create your own job, as far as I'm concerned, it's meaningless. Yeah, it looks good. You know, you look impressive. Oh, he got a degree in here. He got a degree in that. He got a degree in this. He got a degree in that. Okay, now what can you do? You sure can't eat them. <laughs> they sure don't feed you and pay any kind of bills or debts. I know. <laughs> you know. So, you know, don't get, don't get hyped up because somebody tell you they got all these degrees. You know, watch what they do. Yes. You know, you can have, you don't have to have no degree to be out here and, and, and help the community. That's right. You know, you could be a good researcher because that's what I do. I research. Yep, that's what I do. That's what Gloria does. She research. Mm -hmm. Because when you research, then you know what, what the problem is. Mm -hmm. You know from the beginning uh, how it's set up. You won't, you won't be fooled. Yeah. And so we need more researchers out here. This is why people go to hood research because mm -hmm. uh, we just don't, it ain't just a name. Mm -hmm. We do the research. And when we put information out, we put the right information that's out, right. and you know, so the people can make informed decisions. Well, that's true, because a lot of a lot of uh, information coming out is not good. It's not true. The bulk of what you're hearing is not true. It's not good. It's a lot of false teachers. A lot of false, you know, the scripture talk about apostles and prophets. The same way in, 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 the pol in the political realm, in the educational realm. They're there for themselves or to do damage, to hold up or distract. So we got to know, we, we got to watch, we got to be watchful, because the warning is there. They're there, and you know them by their fruits. Not what they say, you see what they do. If it's an orange tree, it shouldn't be apples falling from it. If it's tomatoes, it shouldn't be grapes growing on it. So you have to see what is really, what are they producing? You know, because the people are being destroyed for their lack of knowledge. You got to know the truth so you have a basis. And then you apply that to whatever is being said or done. And if it's truth, then it's going gonna, it's gonna to reveal itself. going to reveal itself. You know, so different people coming in promising whatever, then you look at the results. Like health care. We got the, all this health care. Look at diseases that are at an all-time high. Yeah. Most certainly. Surgeries. Yeah. Every disease category they can invent is at an all-time high. But we got health care. Yeah. I done ran into so many people. Hip replacement. Uh, knee replacement. No, knee replacement. All these joint replacements. How is, you're absolutely right. How is things getting better? And you got most of these robots walking around here. You know, I've got, I know people that got in there two knee uh, replacement and a hip. Yeah. I mean, just about everything. That's right. Anytime they're taking apart, look, what you were created with, you need to keep it as long as you can. Now, if you need to add some or do something, you know, to make it better or to, to sustain it, Preserve but to replace it. it with something artificial, I don't care what they told you. You've been misled because you're going to have problems all the time. Everybody that I met and then had them play uh, uh, hip, knee, or whatever replacement, they're always complaining about pain. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, pain. See, they're going to be in pain the rest of their life. Mm -hmm. So how is that better? You could have been in pain yeah. and kept your original one. Yeah. If you're going to have pain, yeah. now you got two problems. You got something artificial in you, and you got pain. And you're spending more money. And, yeah, and you're spending <laughs> more money. So that's three things. <laughs> when you could have kept what you had, and, then you would have had the pain. And took care of it. Right. Things you knew that was that's destroying the health, you continued to do. Just stop. You know, things we could, it ain't costing you nothing to stop or avoid something that's hurting you. It, it costs you less. That's right. You know, 
So we're doing a lot of stuff. We, you know, we're here for our health to be preserved. It could be preserved. It's not difficult. It's very simple. But we don't want to do certain things. We want to do what everybody else is doing, and everybody else been deceived. The masses have been deceived. Because they don't know what the truth is. You need to be like the Bereans, you know. You say, well, I, what I do, I search the scripture every day. And stuff I hear, I'm going to research and see where the truth is in that. Or what part that they didn't mention in there, you know, that sounds good. But then the, the destruction at the end that's going to be so, that's going to be worse for years to come, people don't get a chance to see that. They don't see that part. They see all that other part that's just glorified. It's the greatest thing says sliced bread. Well, if you didn't slice the bread, you could tear it with your hands. You got hands. You could break it. <laughs> but sliced bread made it, you know. Easy. The cat's meow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, we, we got to be really, we got to be watchful. Yes, and and people that we support, we got to know what we're supporting. What are we getting ourselves in? Yeah, we do, dog. You know, this mic is down low again. It was seemed like it was up a little higher when I first got in here, but it's low. Okay. This mic need to seem like the volume <coughs> is going down a little bit. It's not as high as it was when I first started. Okay. No, okay. Okay. Two. Yeah. Now that's that's a little better. I'd almost be up on top of the mic for you to hear me. Mm -hmm. I'm almost eating it. <laughs> Shoot. I want to eat the mic. Yeah. No, I don't want to do that. <laughs> but, yeah, you know, I hope you all can hear me out there now. If you can't, call in and let me know while the show is going on. Don't wait until after the show, then call me and tell me you couldn't hear me. Call mm -hmm. me while the show is going on. We don't have no callers in, on the uh, line right now. So if you can't hear me, you're having a problem, if the sound is low or whatever it is, call in and let us know. Because that's another thing. We've been getting the complaints. People have been <laughs> saying that they couldn't, uh, the volume was, they can see this, uh, the video was all right, but the volume was, uh, wasn't quite right. But I know on the, your cell phones, ain't nothing we can do about that. Mm -hmm. And I know they're having a lot of problems with the Internet. Now the internet, we don't, we know, we don't have no control over that neither. Mm -hmm. But like your TV, uh, stuff like that. If you got a problem with that, well, you know, we want to know about it. Call us and let us know, because if the volume is not like it should be, where you can hear, we want to know. Mm -hmm. There's no need of us being on here, just working our mouth, and you can't hear what we're saying. Mm -hmm. You know, that's 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 wasting my time and my money. We don't need that. And speaking of money, we also uh, asking for your help, your support mm -hmm. for this program <laughs> and for this station. <clears throat> because it costs for us to be here. It ain't free. Mm -hmm. Every time you see me in glory sitting down here, that's $200. Multiply that by four, that's $800 a month. That's what it costs. Mm -hmm. See, Hassan, he ain't never liked to talk about it. Yeah. He would go in his pocket and he would pay it, wouldn't say anything. But I'm going to tell you, mm -hmm. it costs because I can't afford it. Mm -hmm. I can't afford to go in my pocket every week and to bring you this information. Mm -hmm. Now, if you, 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 you're sorry, you're not willing to cough up $20 or, or something, just to help out, to defray the cost, well, then I don't know what to tell you. Because that's totally ridiculous. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, it costs. Every week it costs us $200 to bring the show up to you. Mm -hmm. And uh, we asked. Now, we got people that, a few people that tries, and they don't fix income. Mm -hmm. And they struggling, they trying. And a lot of you out there that listen to it are doing well. And you can afford it. It ain't going to hurt you. I ain't asking you to pay for the whole program, but you could, you could put a little 10 15 $20 or whatever you can afford. Mm -hmm. We welcome every penny you can send. Mm -hmm. So, you Gosh. know, uh, don't, I mean, don't be shy. 
Help us out. We need it. Okay, we got a couple of more callers here. Caller, you on the air? Yes. I don't mean to be too much off topic, but I'd like to know how in the world did deer get in Palmer Park? Did what? They dropped them things off to put these ticks in the area to make us sick. And we don't recognize it, but we, we used to go. We ain't going to be able to go no more without catching these weird diseases. Well, man, I, I didn't hear know, what you I said. Did what did you say? Uh, I, I didn't hear what you said when you first started off. Get up in Palmer Park. I was riding through Palmer Park, and I seen the deer. deer. Oh, they deer. got a deer crossing signal. Mm -hmm. mm. I want to know how and why would they bring deer there, and they kill them everywhere else in the state. Hmm. Well, I and I'm telling you, you I've seen them. I'm not familiar. Well, I don't know what to tell you about it. I mean, you gonna, you know, you you had the same thing when we used to have them out to Bill out, so you're going to see one every now and then. Now, I, I just don't, I just hope that they don't get carried away with it. Uh, that ain't something that I've been uh, really concerned about because I haven't really seen one. But since you say you have seen one, you know, you just, uh, I guess you have to go to the, what, the DNA and just report it. Oh, DNR. DNR, yeah. Mm -hmm. Go to DNR and report it. That's all. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because mm -hmm. they're supposed to monitor that and, uh, you know, keep a hand on it. Mm -hmm. And then they would go to the, I guess, the park rangers or whoever's out there who's over um, maintaining and the deal or whatever to, to make sure that they do a better job so they don't be out here in the street. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> okay, we got another call here. Caller, you on the air? Hey, Carl, this is Deputy Chief again. Uh, your show is uh, fading in and out. You know, it, it'd be out for about a minute. We're missing what you're saying. And so anyone who have uh, any questions on the articles or any information that I put on the air, if you missed it or didn't understand you can call me at 313-399-8290. Okay. Okay. We're fading in and out, huh? Yeah. That's, that's, that's okay. And and you've been doing that. Uh, that's been occurring all throughout uh, ever since you came. What? Do the sound go off, too? Yeah. Uh, the video, we see the video, but the audio goes out, and it's out for like a minute, and we're missing what you're saying. Yeah, well, I appreciate that because, you know, you I'm paying, paying big for money. this here, and I expect to see and want the people to hear what I'm saying. Right. Well, what are you watching at, uh, Reggie? Uh, smartphone and then my laptop. Laptop and, 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 and the cell phone. Right. Okay. Yep. Laptop and cell phone. Well, the television, I, from what I understand, is is working well. But the laptops and your cell phone. Now I don't know what what can cause that, but uh, I'm glad you, I'm glad that you uh, brought that to our attention. Now, what where you wait? Where, where are you at? Vegas. Huh? Vegas. You in Vegas? Right. Well, that's good. We still need to know because it need to be getting out everywhere. Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely. But if we're not, we need we need to know. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Thank you. But I'm glad to see that it's Vegas and mm -hmm. we ain't losing nothing here in the, in the local area, mm -hmm. as far as the Detroit uh, and uh, Michigan. Yeah. But they, they, you know, at least they know that we're having problems there, and then you know maybe if they can. Somehow uh, they can uh, eliminate that problem, but it's kind of hard 
we can't control everything. But uh, but here's, here's the other thing, Kyle. You know, you, you're asking the people to get engaged. We need these Tyrees to get engaged because in all actuality, we're, we're advocating and fighting for them. We got over 21,000 city of Detroit retirees, okay? And Bill Davis, when I talked to him a uh, while back, he has the ability to contact, according to him, 14 to 15,000 retirees. I think he's ineffective. I think he's compromised. And he is a retiree, and he's in charge of the Detroit Retirees Association. And you don't hear too much of him saying anything in support of retirees. The retirees need to be made whole. They need to get their pension restored. They need to have their sick medical uh, restored. And they need to have annuities restored. Yeah, well, you're absolutely right, but I'm down on time now because I okay. did Bill Davis uh, over the weekend. Yep. The next time I see him, I'm going to mention that to him. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you, you need to, Kyle. You need to. And the retirees need to get with them. Yeah, they most certainly do. Yeah. Okay, man, so give me a call and we can move forward. All right. <laughs> All right. Well... <laughs> Got yeah, one more call. Uh, I'm gonna see. make it quick because we're down on time. Great day, great day, Carl and Gloria. Hi, hi. How you doing? I'm hearing you and seeing you very well. I'm with uh, no uh, <clears throat> cable, just using antenna, which I know we got a uh, okay. change on the 21st. Okay. And your sound is good today. Mm -hmm. so oh, you, okay. Your sound is good. And I'm calling from 48221. Mm -hmm. Detroit. Okay. Okay. Thanks a lot for that. Mm -hmm. See, we we need to know so we can, you know, kind of keep uh, tabs on uh, how things are going and how people are viewing us. Mm -hmm. But it seems like in the immediate area, we're not having no problem. But you know, maybe out, uh, you know, Las Vegas. That's quite a ways that's away. A nice jump. But uh, <laughs> uh, but we seem to be doing well, and as time go by, uh, probably can even eliminate that problem. But we can't, you know, we're doing pretty good so far, as far as I uh, see. So uh, we're down on time. This is the fastest hour in show business, and I just don't know where the time goes, but it just seems like it just, just gone by. So all you... Uh, Call us that's left on the <laughs> left here. Come back next week, Tuesday at 9 to 10, every Tuesday, uh, God willing, as long as we get your support. And uh, until next week, uh, you know, I had some more information to give you, but, you know, time didn't permit it, and plus the fact that we had some other issues that uh, people wanted to be addressed. So we, uh, we'll we have another update on the, the Child Commission, a little more information next week, and uh, probably a little more um, on health and something else because uh, they keep talking about this new flu that's coming around. Oh, I, oh another they yeah, invented, huh? Yeah, something made up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so... Until next week, uh, God willing, uh, see you. You be blessed. Be safe.